Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the forum. Before we get started, just a couple of announcements. First of all, because we're televising and because we have a great deal of respect for people who come and speak to us, if you could take a moment to shut down your cell phones, that would be helpful. And folks, when questions start, if you come up over here, please don't worry about ducking underneath the camera. You won't be photographed until you're at the mic, okay? And one more thing, folks. I don't know how many of you may have looked at the website to see who is coming today and have been expecting to see things on the website that perhaps you haven't been seeing. The forum is in a position right now of some really good changes. We're making a lot of different overtures to f membership. We have a number of things going, but while we have these things going, there's a transition going on. Uh, our video expert, Eric Squires, has an absolutely marvelous project. It's called Teaching Me How to Do a Whole Bunch of Things on the Computer that um, somebody my age hasn't learned yet. But somehow he's very, very patient, and as I try and get up to speed, there will be some errors. I'd like you guys to know that there are cards with my direct email address and my home office phone number on the table. If you have questions or if you perceive problems, don't hesitate to get in touch with me directly and we'll do our best to fix those problems. But one other reason to get in touch with me, other than to send me gifts and say nice things, one other reason is as we are developing some of our changes, some of our progressive changes in this organization, if you have input, if you have suggestions and ideas, those are most welcome, those are encouraged. Again, thank you, those at home, for continuing to watch and for those of you here, without further ado, please allow me to introduce Chris Defebach from the Washington County Department of Transportation, here to share some really cool information about a study and more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, again, my name is Chris Defebach, and I'm with the Land Use and Transportation Group as a policy analyst with, the Washington, with Washington County, and I'm here today really as the project manager for the Washington County Transportation Study. I'd like to introduce two people who are here with me. One is Stephen Roberts. He is a special projects coordinator for the Land Use and Transportation Department. And also here is Diami Valentin, and Diami will be the uh, deputy project manager with me and also in charge of uh, several of the major elements of the study. So what, um, what we're really here today is to describe this Washington County Transportation Study, the major elements of the study, and the outcomes that could be expected and how you can participate throughout the course of this study. Um, and I'm really pleased to be here to, to have this opportunity because now the study is just beginning. It's a great time to be uh, getting the word out. Just, just so that I know what you already know, ha have many of you heard about the study? How many of you heard about the study? Oh, wow. And that's, that's impressive. And how many of you um, participated about a year ago when we distributed a brochure to solicit public input on how we should approach the study? So oh, this is a knowledgeable group. So, so you, so I'm not, we're not starting from scratch here in terms of uh, this study. But to bring you up to date, since we collected public input on how we approach this study, we went through a competitive process and hired a consulting firm. We've hired a team uh, headed by David Evans, um, Inc., to uh, help us with this study. And the board uh, approved the contract at the end of the year, and now we are really um, off and going. Um, I think the, let me see if I got this, I just want to talk a little bit about the study because its origins are pretty unique. Um, we were actually granted funding from the state legislature in late in 2013 to take the opportunity to evaluate the long-term transportation strategies and investments needed to sustain the county's economic health and quality of life in the coming decades. And this is really uh, an important and unique opportunity for us to take the time to study, uh, look long term, and study our transportation needs facing the county. We, uh, as we come out of the recession, we are going to continue to see increased uh, population growth in our downtowns, in the cities in the county, as well as in the, as the urban reserves come online, and the continued strong job growth that we have seen, which will have implications both for commuting traffic within the county and to our adjacent counties. 
Plus, as we've, we uh, continue to see the increased diversity uh, of our population in the county with, uh, with increasing needs such as the uh, aging population. So I think one of the um, values of this study is that it, it, it's a chance to look uh, in the future and look at the cumulative effects of the development that, that as the, our adopted land use plans build out and you can just see how we've changed in the county from the past. This is an old picture of uh, downtown Hillsborough and how we've become a major job center and new modes of transportation like the MAX here. So this is a chance for us to look out um, beyond the current, beyond the 20 year horizon for planning to, to really identify the challenges and opportunities, opportunities facing the county and the implications for transportation. Uh, before I talk a little bit more about the study, I want to clarify that this is a study, and many of you work on, on plans, uh, transportation plans, such as the recent update to our county's transportation system plan, and they are different, and they're different as well from the kind of public engagement that we have when we actually get to the point of building a project. So I just want to spend a little bit uh, on this. Um, our study is looking out long term beyond 20 years, which is the typical timeline for a plan. It requires big picture thinking and we're really assessing the cumulative effects of our plans as, that are adopted and uh, how those could develop and what that means for us in transportation. This is, uh, will inform future uh, decisions. It's different than the transportation plan, which has a timeline within 20 years and is really becomes adopted as part of our comprehensive plan. And it really sets goals, strategies, and objectives, and it really identifies, begins that process of identifying transportation priorities. And of course, I think you're all familiar with the project development phase, which is very short term, where we get to the point where we're selecting and constructing projects. So I just want to emphasize again that this is a study looking out longer term. Um, I, the, I want to just highlight the study process. Um, the, the, we have five major, we've outlined five major steps for the study. The first is called taking stock, where we're going to sort of look at where we've been and what we see on the horizon. The second is where we really develop our land use scenarios that say how, when, when our pl plans that are currently adopted build out, what does that mean for us? The third phase is looking at the transportation investment packages, and so we expect to have some um, diverse ideas for how to address those needs. And then, of course, the evaluation. We're proposing to use a, a multi-objective uh, evaluation that links back to our community values. And then, of course, in the end, we'll have uh, an evaluation of the, uh, the transportation investments, the transportation packages. And uh, that will be a really great time for uh, public input on the trade-offs between uh, one set of options versus another. But before I go to, into this in more detail, oops, that's supposed to, before I go into this in detail, I want to talk a little bit about the structure for soliciting input and review in the course of this study. So we are fortunate that we have already the, um, the, the mayors of all the cities in Washington County meet together along with our uh, county commissioner and the Washington County Coordinating Committee. Th that group will serve as our group really of elected officials that will review uh, uh, this work as we move forward with the major milestones and of course our of board of county commissioners which um, will accept, again this is not a study, this is not a plan that's being adopted, it's a study, they'll accept the conclusions of the study in the end. We are also fortunate in the county in that we already have a structure where the planning directors from each city and the transportation planning staff from each city meet regularly. We'll tap into this existing structure to make sure that we're working with all our cities and partners and we have other agency uh, staff participate here as well uh, to, to help guide us on uh, the, the technical aspects of the study. The one new committee that we are establishing for this committee is a, for this study is a study advisory committee. What the intent here is to establish a committee that is really diverse in their knowledge, experience, and perspectives that can cover the range of, of uh, challenges and opportunities likely to face our county as, the, as we build out our plans, such as 
um, the changes in energy and technology and the development process and the, the uh, pr challenges of goods movement and maintaining community livability. So we'll have a, a, a diverse group uh, at, for this study advisory committee. This is the one committee that we're asking the board to um, uh, appoint. And it will advise staff. It's not a direct reporting to the board. It'll advise staff in, this major, in the major milestones in terms of uh, how, we, how we sort of factor in uh, many of these implications from the growth as we see it in the county. We did have a four week or month long process for soliciting nominations broadly from, for that committee. The application process closed on Friday. And we had 80 applications, and we are proposing a, a committee of a dozen in order, we're intentionally keeping it small to have that dialogue. So um, we have a challenge ahead of us, but it's also good news because it shows how much interest there is in thinking ahead uh, long term for the county and what direction our uh, transportation investments should be going. Um, we, also, we also know as strong as the county is, it's really part of a region, it's part of the state, so we know there are issues, uh, concerns, and just coordination that we'll want to continue with our state agencies like ODOT, Department of Land Conservation Development, uh, and others, as well as our adjacent uh, counties as this work moves forward. And then there'll, there'll probably, we expect that there will be a few um, sort of topical expertise areas where we'll need to convene folks that aren't populated, aren't part of our other groups. One example for this is, is health. Uh, we are seeing an increasing interest at the health impacts of various transportation decisions. This is an area that we're all still learning. This is an area where we think bringing a little expertise from the, some of the state uh, agencies who work with health and the relationship between the built environment and others could be very helpful. So we will have a few uh, small work groups helping us come up with the right kind of evaluation measures. Uh, lastly, I want to make sure that it's clear that we will be including a uh, public involvement opportunities throughout the course of the study. Uh, we, this is, because this is a study, it's, uh, we, we, we think that there's three main points where we really want to seek, um, need to seek public involvement, and I'll get to this a little bit more in the, as I talk about the study process. What, but we're, what we're proposing is a, an opportunity for one of those interactive websites and use various tools to uh, build awareness about the study and encourage people to uh, check in with the website, take, participate in these, in, in these um, online interactive uh, opportunities, as well as participate in some polling we em envision as well as some targeted outreach we, en we uh, understand will be needed to, uh, to help us engage the communities that don't typically participate in these studies that may not speak English as a first language and have other barriers to participation. We do have a website that's been up for over a year. We're gonna continue to update that and that will be a great place to uh, be able to uh, check on, up on just this the day-to-day week-to-week progress in this study as well as solicit comments of course all our public comments we're we're keeping track of them and we're folding them in it'll be uh, important for us we to bring these to our study advisory committee and to others and share those so now I want to get back to the study process and talk just a little bit more about those five steps um, again, we anticipate the study will take about a year and a half and be done about mid-2016. Uh, this first step is called taking stock and uh, really includes two main steps. One is to look back at, at where we've been, what were our forecasts like for our needs 20, 25 years ago, how have those materialized. I think of it as kind of a humbling experience to see what, what were we good at forecasting and what were we, what were we not good at. Plus look at sort of our, the investments we've made and what kinds of differences those have made. The other part of this is looking forward to what we already know from our regional transportation plan and our recently adopted county transportation system plan about needs that remain, deficiencies that remain uh, that aren't met in, in, in the course of the 20 years uh, that are still out there unresolved. Uh, so that's our, our taking stock phase. The other part of this is that in this study, we, we know there's many different objectives to optimize. It's not just about how many hours of delay there are on the road, because there's so many more, uh, ro so many more 
factors that come into play in making decisions about transportation, such as community livability. So this will be one of our first tasks will be to confirm what we already understand are the community values that help guide this study. And we'll, this is one of those places where we'll be looking for um, interactive input um, from our uh, website. The second uh, uh, task can be very exciting. We are looking beyond the 20 year horizon to what happens when our, our uh, adopted plans develop. This, we know that it's gonna take us longer than 20 years to hit that goal, so this is an opportunity to look at the cumulative effect of the development rather than proceeding as sort of a project by project basis. We're gonna look at the cumulative effect of the, of the development and we're also gonna do something that could be pretty exciting which is look at some of those factors that could you know, come at us th that we need to think about what might be different in 20 years. The technology is one of those examples. How might technology change that could affect some of the ways we plan? So this is gonna be uh, uh, um, uh, an interesting uh, uh, process where we'll develop two plausible land use scenarios and the reason we we decided to do two is we know that any one is is um, we're probably not going to get it right so by picking two it allows us a chance to have a little bit of a sensitivity test about different ways our our adoptive plans could develop the 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 next um, task is again we expect to generate quite a bit of interest in this is what kind of transportation investments are needed to uh, support the, uh, the development as envisioned in these two plausible scenarios. Again, we propose trying to combine the various ideas we anticipate getting into two different packages to test. So this isn't the kind of study where you'll look exactly at, at one project, but we'll be, you know, and look exactly at what the impacts are of one project, but really a system of projects. So we'll have two different packages. And again, we expect to get a lot of ideas about what should be in those packages. We are anticipating, of course, that there are multimodal uh, packages. The next is the evaluation. Uh, as I said, we're really starting with these community values, and we'll take uh, evaluation measures that reflect those broad values that, uh, that are held here in the county. And um, the outcomes will really be helping us understand what are the trade-offs for different uh, investment packages. Then uh, we expect, again, a third point where we will have a lot of different viewpoints on which is the direction the county should go. And again, we, we expect that this will really help inform us about the, a, a picture of how the county can grow and what the trade-offs are of different transportation investments. We anticipate that there will be some areas that are gonna be kind of no-brainers where we'll say, oh my gosh, under either of these scenarios of how we might develop, this is a very important uh, you know, process, a series of packages that we really should move forward on better understanding. Other points, we're, sh we're sure there'll be, continue to be unanswered questions and the need for next steps to further uh, our work. And as if any study at this nature, we expect we're gonna learn things that we don't really know yet. It said it'll be a study process. So I think one of the, the questions uh, that everyone has is how can I fit in? Uh, a couple of the ways that you can help is to help us build awareness of the study, such as inviting us to come here today. Uh, we have a um, email list, stakeholder list. If you sign up for that, we'll get the, n up, you'll get notified every time we update the website. You can also just check the website and send us your comments at any time. We have a little comment box on there. And then we will have uh, the surveys, primarily at those three major points where we'll be soliciting uh, public input. Um, but, and, uh, and then of course, we would hope that you would invite us back at the major study milestones. The one I think that would be particularly uh, useful and interesting is uh, when we have the, uh, the trade-offs and really have a discussion about how the county could grow and how we need to respond. And I would just like to, to end by, I, again, kind of a, a a optimistic note, I guess. I think this is really is a unique opportunity for the county. Uh, the, uh, we've, we've done this before. We've taken a look at our needs and worked together. We have a strong history of collaboration among the various agencies, cities, and, and, the, and the public, and we believe this is a great opportunity for us to take a look out and get ahead of the, the issues that we see facing the county 
and really work on uh, you know having some um, d debate and deliberation on what the best uh, approaches are for us. So that is the end of my sort of fixed presentation. Uh, and you want to start kick over for uh, um, questions, and then again, Steve and Diami are here to assist with the questions. Thank you, Chris, very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> considering the topic, considering the topic, I anticipate 14,642 questions. However, I need to remind folks that you need to be a forum member in order to have the right to ask questions. It's one of the benefits of membership. And membership, quick, get your membership renewed before it goes up. Ladies and gentlemen, question time. And yeah, hi, John Tyner, forum member. As a person who's been involved in this issue, since I was young, and I'm 60 now, I first got involved in discussion when I was 28, and the, um, the issues of transportation uh, were hot then. Something called the West Side Bypass was in play, and something called West Side Light Turn Rail, both of which I supported. And I've been, and uh, so I've been involved in studies for now close to 30 years. We haven't built one highway. We expanded the Twalton Sherwood uh, Road. And the traffic is terrible. As a matter of fact, almost impassable in certain hours from east to west side. And I supported Bruce Starr's study, but what mechanics of this study are going to tell us things we don't already know and haven't known for 30 years? Because I'd like to know. I'm 60. I'd like to know before I die. I mean, the mean shows I'll be dead at 72, which allows only 12 more years for the revolution to occur. So if, if I understand your question, it's... What are we going to learn from the study that we don't already know? Is that the just just of the question? I think we already know everything we yeah. need to know. Though. I think I think we have what we haven't done is looked at the cumulative effect of say when there have been reserves develop and that as those of you that are that are uh, living near the uh, current plant uh, areas that are being planned. Uh, know that there are implications for tra new implications for traffic from those areas. And it, it's an opportunity for us to look beyond in terms of the full build out and really, or close to build out and really better understand the, the issues and comprehensively look at the, at the options. So we have no doubt that the questions such as why not a bypass will come up again in the course of the, the study. We're already hearing it. And that'll be a, the challenge is to figure out how we package these investments and, and look at them across a broad range of evaluation measures. So yes. Um, we, we are looking back and seeing what have we learned from that process from 30, 20, 30 years ago and using that to inform our future. My name is Bill Kroger, a forum member. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Um, I, I have a great concern about the, uh, uh, what's going on out around Roy Rogers and Schultz Ferry Road, uh, the growth out there, because I know it's going to cause big problems traffic-wise further down the stream on Schultz Ferry down by I-17 or 217. And uh, I talk to politicians and people about it, and they just look at me with a blank stare. You know, like, you know, everybody says, well, I know it's a problem, but nobody seems to be doing anything about it. So I'm just kind of curious if that's going to be part of the study that you're looking at. And one other thing that I have a bugaboo about is that every time a max station has gone up, they just don't have enough parking. So maybe uh, is that going to be part of the study thing, too, and what can be done about that? Thanks. Those are two good uh, points. And in answer to your first question, yes, this is a place where the challenges of the cumulative growth will be considered. And it is an opportunity to get uh, a broader and common understanding of the challenges the county faces. In terms of parking and uh, parking particularly around the MAC stations, uh, that it could be something. I, mean, I think that's open as, as to say whether that's a, part of our package. But that's, that's a good example. Chris and Leslie, forum member, again, thank you for coming. Uh -huh. I'm wondering about, uh, do you have computer models, mechanics, statistics, and triggers to, to tell you how to plan? We, we do have multiple com computer models and uh, statistics. And more importantly, we have a team of folks that know how to use them. Uh, and so we, this is part of something that we've been working on because we are, by going out beyond the 20-year horizon, we are, um, there are some new challenges for us, but we are. We're working with a combination of our, with our consulting team providing expertise 
So we have models that we'll be using to uh, generate the, our plausible land use scenarios and to run the travel uh, demand forecasts. So yeah, that is an important part of our work. Just those triggers alone. Yeah, yeah, no, that's an important part. John Hutzler, forum member. Um, I'm curious, given that you're looking out more than 20 years, I mean, that means that there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of mm -hmm. variables. Um, I'm, I'm curious how you, how you expect to capture those in just two scenarios. Uh -huh. I mean, are there some, are there some uh, uh, fundamental assumptions, for example, regarding how much funding you expect will be available or um, uh, uh, will, the, will the assumed population growth of the county be the same in both scenarios? How, how are you going to control some things in order to examine the others yeah. in just two scenarios. Yeah. So this is, it is going to be hard to keep it to two scenarios. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the hardest challenges we have. We have a, a great uh, team, our consultant team, uh, with a lot of expertise in this specific area in terms of sort of future planning, future scenario planning. So they've outlined about five different um, sort of categories, like technology is a good example. If the cars become safer, what does that mean for highway capacity? or reliability and what are our needs, how does this affect us? So I think you've, you've nailed a challenge that we have in the study. Uh, we're gonna do the best we can to sort them into two scenarios. One of, the, one of the things is there may be a lot of changes, but then the question we have is how do those changes affect travel behavior? So there'll be a lot of changes. We have to take that, that extra step in saying how, how might that affect the travel behavior? So we're doing some survey, we're, we're doing some work with uh, this sort of there's a, there's a group of folks that focus, specialize in this, and we're uh, surveying them and um, using that to inform our discussions. Yeah, John Bell, forum member. I got two questions. Well, one, when we build Sunset uh, Transit uh, parking, in a lot, uh -huh. parking Garage, they made a conscious effort to make it so you couldn't add stories to it. Mm -hmm. At that time, in new construction, we maybe had maybe a $100,000 cost yeah. To put those second stories up. Yeah. Now they 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 grew that particular uh, parking garage grew uh, out in six weeks or less. Mm -hmm. uh, it was filled. It's been filled ever since. Mm -hmm. So I would think by by that experience we could have spent a hundred thousand and we can go up another three stories maybe, mm -hmm. or four. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other question is like uh, I have a, um, a need on a hundred thirteenth a special need there. It's, they just added 20 houses to Melanie Street a year ago, and they're going to add 34 more. It's 50 st houses on one little narrow street used to be at an alley. Now they got a, a 60 houses on it, on Melanie Street. And they still have 113th, one and two lanes, no sidewalks. And that should have been made years ago with sidewalks and three lanes minimum, if not four. And, and that area is growing, going to be growing. We're going to have at least 40 to 50,000 new, by estimates, Washington County uh, residents in the Aloha, Beaverton, Hillsborough area in the next 20 years. And right now, it's a half an hour drive to go from Beaverton to Aloha a lot of times. Yeah. Question? Question. How can we plan more to have those? in our planning so we won't be uh -huh. behind be the one of the top congested, congested areas in the country. Yeah. Well, I think first for the park and ride at Sunset Transit Center, I think that is a good question. I'm sure that will come up as we get to developing those transportation packages. Um, to what extent should we put capital costs in to expanding park and ride versus that, you know, operating costs from our buses and all. So I'm sure that's going to come up. I expect it to, I guess. The second question, I think this study is a chance for us to look out and look again at the cumulative. You mentioned a couple of projects that are going in. This is a chance for us to look at the cumulative effect and be able to assess, okay, what do we need to do to be prepared for that? I, I think you've hit a, um, certainly a concern that we hear a lot about the roads that are expected to do extra duty now. Most of our roads were built and designed in 1920s, 30s. Mm -hmm. 40s, most of them were almost all built. Uh -huh. 
-huh. Very few of our built roads were actually constructed, designed in the uh -huh. current day, uh -huh. except the areas where there's fields, but then they were all the main uh, artillery, the main roads are all basically designed, uh -huh. and they, de they don't have enough width in them, they don't have enough carrying of population. Uh -huh. Our cars. Yeah, no, it's a challenge. I think we're going to yeah. learn more about that in the future, too. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Tom Lee, forum member. A uh, few weeks ago, I saw an article, a newspaper article, about uh, uh, the. Uh, there, there is apparently some perceived trend that uh, some of the uh, corporations having offices in Washington County are uh, moving into Portland and, and transferring their uh, work there. And uh, uh, of course, one of the uh, possible uh, causes of this is, is the, 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 the strangled Sunset Highway, uh, which uh, is observable for, for anyone who, who is brave enough to get on it in the morning or afternoon. And uh, when I look at the map of the United States and I see the metropolitan areas, uh, most of the large cities in the United States have a beltway highway system uh, which, uh, which connects to the interstate highway system that, 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 that runs uh, through the cities. Uh, Portland has half a beltway. We have 205 specifically, but we don't have anything uh, going uh, uh, parallel in, in Washington County. And uh, what I'm wondering about is uh, whether the study uh, will, uh, and I'm not talking about a bypass, I am talking about a beltway, a beltway like uh, that would that would be like 205 that starts in Vancouver, comes across uh, through Washington County and ultimately connects to uh, I-5 uh, uh, south of Portland. Um, that's, of course, an addition to the interstate highway system. And I'm wondering, is your study going to uh, address a possible addition to the interstate highway system? I, that's a good question, and I can't tell you until we get to the stage of identifying the transportation packages. We're going to have to walk a line where we're really encouraging people to think big, but we don't want to spend our resources evaluating investments that are dead on arrival if they don't have meet some sort of basic um, test. So this is going to be a question is how big, how big? It's one thing to think through Washington County, how far do we go into Vancouver? So I, I'm sure we're going to have more debate on that as part of defining what these packages are. Harry Bodine, forum member. <clears throat> I'm just wondering how many people in this room are like I am and remember when Murray Boulevard was a two-lane gravel road between Allen and Shoals Ferry. <laughs> how far we have come. A two-part question, if I might. The voters and tired last year decided they didn't want to play the game with metro and transportation planning. They don't want light rail and so forth. No corridors. How does Tigard fit into this program, is this study? Number two, is there any element here that's going to discuss how we're going to pay for all this over the long run? Yeah. So uh, Tigard is one of our cities, and they will participate with us in this study. So they'll be there with us. Uh, in terms of how we'll pay for it, I, that's, that will need to be one of the evaluation measures as we look at the various options and say, okay, what's the, you know, is this something that's cost effective? Is this something that's going to be cost a lot? So it'll be, will be included as part of the evaluation measures. We won't have, or this is not funded to do fine engineering, so we won't have engineering cost levels. But we're, we're hoping to come up with some general orders of magnitude that can say, okay, yeah, this is good, but look at the finance implications. Hi, I'm Karen Bolin. I'm the president of the Aloha Business Association. I'm wondering if once you choose your board of 12, whether those names will be published on your website? Oh, yeah, sure. 
And then secondly, I'm In wondering. In fact, it'll be appointed by the board, so it'll be an agenda it'll item for the board. Okay. Then secondly, I'm wondering if the cities are allowed on your TAC committee, Technical Assistance Committee, are the cities of Beaverton and Hillsborough allowed a business development person on that committee or representation by their business development person in your process in some fashion? We have, we have um, the, for the, te the Transportation Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. we often have people who come and sit uh, with us in that meeting. So it's posted on the website. People are invited to come in. Right. So my point is, if the cities have representation on your committee, how do the non-cities get that same equal voice? So Bethany, Aloha, um, you know, Bull Mountain, how, how could we have equal voice in your process if we're not invited to the table? Oh, well, we have county staff there who That's are, not the same. Are, well, that's what we have. We have county staff that are... Uh, so I would ask county. that you consider in your ad hoc process, mm -hmm. since you're willing to consider one for health, consider one for business. Because this transportation issue is a big deal for business. It is. How we will attract and how we will maintain. Yeah. And if you're willing to look at health, I think you need to look at yeah. business and ha health. Ha we, we ha yes. <laughs> Thank we, you very we much. Will. Thank you. Hi, uh, Phil Nelson, forum member. Thank you for coming today. Uh, I'm wondering about science and looking into the future 20 years. And you read things about fuel uh, uh -huh. supply and electric stations to charge your cars and the use of pavement to suck up carbon and uh, things like that. And I'm wondering, do you have a specific science uh, component to your study or people that have expertise in that field uh, who will be participating in your work? Yeah, so we do, as I mentioned, our, on our consultant team, we have the firm Eco Northwest. And they have uh, connections uh, across the country with experts on sort of these futurist, future planning. So I'm not sure how much into the science we're going to get because we've got to li link it back to our transportation system. But I, I hear you that this is going to be an interesting part of this study is to sort of think about what, what might we see in the future that could affect the way we either behave or our urban form or our transportation needs. Yeah. John Hutzler again. Um, <clears throat> there's a, currently a, a proposed ballot measure initiative similar to the ones that were passed down in Tiger that would, that would uh, uh, limit the county's ability to plan for mass transit. Um, how, would, how would that ballot measure, if it passes, impact a study like this? Well, um, I'd have to think about that and get back to you. I'd have to read more the specifics of what the initiative would do. I know there are certain limits about how much can be spent on planning for uh, high capacity transit or exclusive. And I, you know, this is a big study. We'd, I, it'd be really hard to tease out what part of that is, because we're looking multimodal. Yeah, is this study funded entirely by funds from the state? It is, except for we're putting in some staff time. Yeah. So, thank you. Jerry Arnold, member. I was just curious, how much is coming from the state of Oregon for this study, and what do you think? What do you estimate the in-kind contribution would be? So, the total budget between state resources, in-kind resources, is about what? The funding we got from the state is one and a half million. And uh, I can't give you the estimate of the staff time right now. I haven't cal calculated that. But we have, a, um, we have a couple other people working on it, not full time, but helping us with the consultants on our, on our end. So would another half a million dollars be somewhere in the realm? So I, I don't want to say until okay. I've gotten a pencil no, out. That's fine. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thanks for being here, Eric Squires, forum member. As there's no line behind me, I'm gonna take two bites at the apple. Uh, first, uh, kind of a simple yes or no question. Um, my understanding is if we look in the history of plans that were put to bed long ago, we had something called Corridor H. And Corridor H was the plan for a west side bypass. So my yes or no question for you is this. Is there any historical data on Corridor H that can be pulled through to save money in this new study? I, 
yeah, I think things have changed so much since that. Are you talking about the Western Bypass Study? Correct. Corridor I, H was uh, just a, a yeah. general name, a, a linkage yeah. of the corridor. However, specifically, is there any historical data within or yes. ex excluding quarter H that could be pulled what, what forward. We're, what we're planning to do is go back and look at the data that was used there and look at how it's changed, how it's materialized, how the forecasts have materialized and what we learned from that in that first taking stock section. Uh, in terms of, we're now at the horizon year from when that was planned. And so it, looking future, it won't help us because it didn't go out that far. But we are, as part of our staking stock, looking back and seeing sort of what was forecast and how did, how, what did we learn from that? Excellent, thank you. My second bite at the apple addresses uh, one of my passions, which is citizen involvement. And I'm curious if you have looked at uh, what I would consider fatigue in the populace for studies. As someone who ran CPO6 for eight election cycles, I was involved in the Aloha Reed Bill study, the TV Highway study, um, just study after study. And, uh, um, and, and now I've got another study. And I'm just, you know, at this point, I have to express this concern, is that um, we've been studied to death. Where are we gonna get the action? And th this is, I'm just curious if, if that's uh, factoring in at all in your citizen involvement process. It is factoring in the citizen involvement pro process in the sense that we understand it's a different type of engagement that we ex expect. It, if we we're planning to widen Murray Road from the gravel lane to where it is now, we're going to get a certain type of interest. This is going to have a different type of interest because it won't have that immediate effect. Uh, I would say in terms of the fatigue from study, I would say no. I think that we are... I know that we are uh, learning from the, we've learned from the TV highway study and are moving forward with those implementation actions. Same with the Lower Reedville, there was a long list of implementation actions, actions and there's been a lot of uh, momentum built from that to move forward on specific uh, investments and code changes and other actions. So I think those, those, those are moving forward in terms of implementation. It's just sometimes a fairly incremental process. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And, and thank you, I just want to say one last thing. I know uh, Andrew Singalakis is Singalaka sorry he couldn't be here today. There's a miscommunication on the schedule. I know he was uh, included as one of the speakers in the announcement that went out, so thank you. Chris, first of all, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Thank you for bringing the staff. Yes, I understand there was a, a, a miscue in the scheduling as far as Andrew's concerned. And in a brief communication with him, he has agreed to come back. I'm looking forward to having you guys come uh, as the study progresses, as well as when the final results are in. Ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of moments about some upcoming programs. Next week, February 9th, we have Aliza Kaplan and Steve Wax from the Innocence Project. Uh, we're looking at what they do and learning an awful lot. It's a very exciting program. And on the 16th, we'll be discussing draining the wetlands in our county with Speaker Brian Wegner, Advo Advocacy Manager of Tualatin River Keepers. And on the 23rd, we have Jane Scott from the City of Beaverton discussing the Arts Commission and in particular, the Arts Center that has been proposed for, let's see, I've lived in Beaverton for how long? Anyway, the Arts Center that someday may be a reality. We'll learn more about that on the 23rd. Again, for you here, please remember to be kind and generous when it comes to the wonderful serving people that manage to give us our food and drinks without disrupting the speakers. And once again, for February 2nd, Groundhog Day, and we won't be repeating the program, repeating and repeating and repeating, but happy Groundhog Day, and again, thanks to our presenters. Thanks a lot for coming. <laughs>